Welcome to New Hampshire's Business. I'm Fred Coker. The kind of cyber attack that occurred in the U.S. recently on the Colonial Pipeline is uh, not a stranger to New Hampshire. It's called ransomware. And uh, here are the New Hampshire attacks that uh, have been, re been reported publicly. Uh, the town of Salem Municipal Government uh, ransomware downloaded data from servers and demanded money. Town of Durham Police Department ransomware access department's files and demanded cash. New Hampshire Public Radio ransomware access some donation information, but not financial information, and the attack was stopped by a third party provider. Sunapee School District ransomware access data and demanded money. Dartmouth College ransomware impacted machines, but couldn't execute due to safety measures already in place. And then here's a quote from 2019. A new organization will fall victim to ransomware every 11, 11 seconds in 2021, by 2021. And in this quote, 75% of companies infected with ransomware were running up to date endpoint protection. With me to walk through this threat and to uh, what businesses and cities and towns can do to protect themselves is the president of sales for Security 7 Networks, Jay Smith. Welcome, Jay. Thank you very much for having us, Fred. Your logo uh, says, uh, we live cybersecurity, and uh, you're focused on small, medium-sized enterprises. What's the most common threat that uh, they're seeing right now? Actually, it's, it's kind of all hands on deck. It's, um, there's, there's quite a number of attacks that uh, you know, I equate it to trying to protect the house with just a, a lock on the front door. So you know, it's combinations of ransomware, denial of service. Um, it, it's, um, it's pretty much nonstop. It's not just ransomware. It's all others. Yeah. The, the regular antivirus and anti-malware protection, as you know, doesn't detect everything, and especially a, a sophisticated ransomware attack. What solutions are you recommending to your clients? You know, there's a common uh, saying in our industry about uh, defense in depth. So I think there's a misnomer that some people that will have just one type of protection, and then they'll think that they're protected when, in fact, they're really not. So um, we like this defense in depth type of, um, you know, type of environment where it's a layered security approach. Yeah. And, you know, the, the way this happens, as you know, somebody clicks on an attachment, on an email attachment, and that unlocks the ransomware, correct? Um, that's one of them. It could be not just an attachment. It could be a link within an embedded email. That's the most common form of, of um, a link. ransomware. Um, yeah. And then what happens from there is... Um, that machine gets infected, and um, in the worst cases, um, the rest of the population within the network, it spreads laterally through the rest of the network. So what ends up happening is everything in an organization gets encrypted. Yeah. Now, the key issue in a ransomware attack in particular is the payment of the ransom or the money that's being demanded. What do you suggest to companies that face that? You know, that's a pretty complicated issue. Um, there's been some guidance from the U.S. Treasury Department that has indicated that depending upon who the organization is, um, that it could in fact be illegal to pay the ransom. You know, the Colonial Gas Pipeline um, example that you'd used before, um, I saw a recent article where that was a $4.4 million ransomware attack, and they chose to pay it pretty quickly within a couple hours of getting the attack. So it becomes a very complicated um, issue whether you pay or you're not, and you should probably consult your cybersecurity insurance policy as well as, you know, your cyber lawyer as well. Yeah, I saw the, the Sunapee attack that I mentioned. Uh, they didn't get their data back for a month, um, yeah. and, uh, but as they worked hard on it. Well, my thanks to Jay Smith of Security 7 Networks for this briefing on cybersecurity.